welcome students this session is for ba second year english literature paper first which is poetry and drama near poetry section you have a poem the soldier by rupert brook which will which we will be dealing in this session rupert brook was born on august 3rd 1887 rugby warwickshire england and he died april 23rd 1915 skyros greece before we come to the text of the poem let's have a look at the uh, life and works of rupert brook rupert brook went on to study first classics and then english literature at king's college cambridge where he was also awarded a fellowship in recognition of his work on john webster so um, brook was given a fellowship uh, because he worked on john webster who was english dramatist of uh, jacobian age and this writer webster was best known for his tragedies so brook's work gave him recognition and he was awarded fellowship for this brook's circle in cambridge included lytton and james strachey geoffrey and maynard Keynes and Virginia Woolf. So these writers were in his uh, close circle when he was studying in uh, Cambridge. He was a leading figure of a group of friends dubbed New Pagans for their love of nature, camping, rambling, and naturalism. So uh, uh, Rupert Brooke name is also uh, attached to this uh, New Paganism, uh, which is just like any uh, spiritual movement that attempts to revive. the ancient polytheistic uh, religions of europe and middle east and because uh, uh, rupert brook and his friends they had love for nature and camping rambling and uh, naturism so they were also uh, called as new pagans he became interested in socialism and was president of uh, university fabian society uh, because uh, uh, brook has his interest in uh, socialism so he became president of this famous uh, fabian society uh, this fabian society uh, is a british socialist organization who whose purpose was to advance the principles of uh, democratic socialism and uh, the best thing of this uh, society was that the procedure that they used was a reformist uh, effort rather than any revolutionary overthrow and uh, Uh, Rupert Brooke had uh, this interest in socialism so he became president of this society Brooke volunteered for active service at the outbreak of war in August 1914 so he also participated in war World War I and with the help of Marsh and Churchill gained commission in Royal Naval Division he was part of British expeditionary force After this first shocking experience of war he wrote five sonnets which at the time were lauded for their eloquent patriotism and which in later years were derided for their hollow hollow sentimentalism so uh, this poem also the soldier which is there in your course it is uh, it has this uh, element of patriotism a strong element of patriotism in it but later when people came to know about um, the the problems that uh, these uh, soldiers have faced uh, after war and uh, these uh, especially the trench warfare uh, their soldiers faced lot of worse conditions so uh, the later poetry does not have this uh, only patriotism attached to it or uh, uh, too much of sentimentalism attached for it uh, because uh, brooks poetry gives just one angle presents just one, one angle of uh, uh, patriotism or of war uh, but if you if we look at this poem from the other angle we come to know that uh, this uh, poem some at times sounds quite jingoistic because uh, uh, it is overtly and uh, patriotic so we see that uh, in the later years people criticize this poem for hollow sentimentalism Brook died in 1915 before seeing a further action uh, because later the conditions of the war they it became worst 
uh, he died of blood poisoning and that was the way, uh, the way he left this world. When we look at the poetic style of uh, this Georgian poet, that is Rupert Brooke, we see that he wrote in anti-Victorian style uh, because we see in his works the rustic themes and subjects such as friendship and love. While Brooke's works is often said to have either reflected or affected the mood of British public between late 1914 and late 1915, he was also, and often still is, criticized for some. The idealism of the war sonnet is actually a jingoistic glorification of war, a carefree approach to death which ignored the carnage and brutality. So in his poem, uh, the, the Soldier, which is, as we know, that's a war sonnet, uh, on one hand, it did affect the mood of British people by in, in influencing them with uh, patriotic ideas and too much of love towards nation. But it has the other side also because it is criticized that it is too idealistic and it is uh, actually a jingoistic. Uh, jingoistic is uh, an over patriotic uh, expression which favors war. And uh, this poem also, it glorifies war. And uh, uh, it has a carefree approach to death, uh, and it uh, does ignore the carnage and brutality of war. So on one hand, uh, it influenced people in a patriotic manner, but on the other hand, it is also criticized because it does not see the, the violence and the damage which is caused by war. While critics viewed Brooks' poetry as too sentimental and lacking depth, he also considered his work a reflection of the mood in England during the years leading up to first, uh, leading up to World War I. So um, this is uh, what we find in this poem, uh, Soldier by Rupert Group, that it is too sentimental, but at times uh, critics have uh, criticized it for uh, lacking depth. Uh, then uh, also we can say that uh, this poetry, it reflects the mood of England uh, in, the in, in the initial years of World War I. Brooke wartime sonnets, 1914-15, brought him immediate fame because these poems were quite popular among people. Uh, they expressed an idealism in the face of death that is in strong contrast to later poetry of trench warfare. Uh, the later poetry of trench warfare uh, means that uh, this trench warfare, it exposed to uh, elements, these soldiers, uh, they used to live in trenches filled with water and which became muddily uh, quagmires in World War I. And the, the worst conditions that these soldiers faced, this was reflected in later poetry. So this uh, poetry of Rupert Brooke is in sharp contrast uh, to the later years poetry of war because uh, Brooke's poetry expresses a lot of idealism and uh, for, for uh, love for one's country, uh, poet somewhere he ignores the reality uh, of uh, war which has uh, brutality and death and uh, so much of uh, worse conditions involved with it. So this uh, uh, poetry of, so, uh, of Rupert Brooke lies in sharp contrast to the later war poetry. Now let's look at the text of this poem, Soldier. Uh, this poem undoubtedly has a lot of uh, patriotism and uh, feelings towards one's nation, uh, where he says that uh, he's connected to England physically, emotionally, spiritually. And he says that wherever he is, he should be considered uh, as belonging to only his own country, that is England. He says that if I should die, think only this of me, that there's some corner of a foreign field that is forever England. Uh, because uh, he was commissioned and he uh, participated in war, uh, so he said that if he dies in war in some other country, uh, he is, and if he's buried there in that uh, foreign place, this place should not 
uh, uh, this place where he'll be buried should not be considered as his homeland. Rather, he says that his body forever will belong to England, and even the place that uh, he is buried, uh, that place will also become England forever. There shall be in that rich earth a richer dust concealed. So he glorifies his country, and he says that in that rich earth of that foreign country, foreign land, uh, the richer dust, that is, uh, he refers to his uh, homeland, that is England, he says that my body will be concealed, the richer dust of England will be concealed, will be hidden in the uh, rich earth of that foreign land. A dust whom England bore, shaped, made aware. He says that uh, whatever he is, he is framed by his own country, he is shaped by his own country. All his awareness and all his knowledge he got from this country gave once the flowers to love, her ways to roam. Uh, he gives references to uh, this natural uh, place, natural objects, flowers and paths, and uh, he says that how he belongs to his homeland, England, uh, the, even the nature belongs to him. The body, a body of England's breathing English air, washed by the rivers, blessed by the suns of home. He completely unifies himself to his homeland, and he says that he completely belongs to uh, this place because his body has breathed English air, and uh, all the rivers and the sun and the sunshine of this country belongs to him. And uh, he has been blessed by being in this country, in his homeland. Uh, the river, the air, the sunshine, everything uh, his body has received. And he mingles himself completely to this uh, place uh, where he is born. So uh, this uh, poem has too much of uh, philosophical as well as uh, nostalgia for his own country in a foreign land. And think, so it's addressed to readers, and he says uh, to the readers that you think like this, this heart, all evil shed away, a pulse in the eternal mind, no less, gives somewhere back the thoughts by England given. Because if he dies in this foreign land, uh, and all that evil will be gone, uh, just remember one thing, that the pulse, that is his uh, life, is now merged with the eternal mind. His thoughts that are uh, purely for his own country, that have now merged with eternal mind, that is God, heaven. So no less give somewhere back the thoughts by England given. So he was completely shaped by England uh, because he's born there. The thoughts are for his own country, and these thoughts are now merged with the eternal mind. That means nowhere uh, will he ever think uh, of belonging to somewhere else other than his own homeland. Her sighs and sounds, dreams happy as her day, and laughter learnt of friends and gentleness in heart at peace under an English heaven. Uh, this uh, stanza of the poem, uh, it shows that how completely in thoughts, in sights and sounds, that is all the sensuousness of the poet, it belongs to England. His dreams, which are happy dreams as the day of England, and uh, the laughter, of, and he remembers his friends, the gentleness in heart at peace under English, under an English heaven. Even the place where he will be buried in a foreign land, it will become a mini England in itself. It will, it will not be ever considered as uh, a place which, which holds a poet. Rather, he says that uh, it will become wherever he is buried. He is completely an Englishman. He is absolutely only for his own country. Uh, all his sensuousness of sight, sounds, laughter, friends, his uh, thoughts, his feelings, his uh, experiences, everything is uh, molded and shaped by his own country and he belongs to his own country and he takes death so easily that even if he dies uh, fighting for his um, country and, it, uh, and he's buried in any foreign land, that place where he's buried will never be considered as, his, his dead body will never be considered as belong to a, a foreign land. Rather, the place where he's buried, uh, it will be considered as in a small England in itself, and his grave will be 
uh, in absolutely in peace under an English heaven. Uh, the sky even over, over that grave will belong only to England. So this is the, that sense of belonging, this patriotism and too much of a sentimentalism towards one's country which is uh, projected in this uh, poem by uh, Rupert Brooke. If you look at the analysis of uh, this poem, we see that uh, the soldier is one of Brooke's war sonnets of uh, 1914. In the war, thousands of men had been killed in action. Uh, the soldiers struck the perfect patriotic chord of the time, suggesting that the men who had given their lives had done so for a good cause, and that they represented the best and the bravest of Englishmen. This, this was the initial war years where uh, people, they were quite influenced uh, by Luke's poetry and uh, it did infuse in them a lot of uh, patriotism and love for one country and even to give their lives for a good cause. Uh, and they were considered as best and bravest if they were representing their country in war. It is deeply patriotic and idealistic poem that expresses a soldier's love for his homeland. That's like one way of looking at this poem, where you see that uh, there's too much of idealism, there's too much of patriotism, and soldier's love for for one's for his homeland is expressed uh, quite beautifully in this poem. Uh, and here it, the, the case is England, that soldier belongs to England, which is portrayed as a kind of nurturing paradise, because he says that he has been framed, he has been shaped by England, and England is uh, presented for the readers as a place which nurtures uh, his, uh, his people. Indeed, such is the soldier's bond with England that he feels his country to be both the origin of his existence and the place to which his consciousness will return when he dies. So he's so much attached to his country that he says that even when he is living, he belongs to his own country. Even if he dies, his consciousness will also belong to this uh, country only. The poem was a hit with the public at the time, capturing the early enthusiasm for war. Uh, because this was this poem uh, is a war poetry which was written uh, in the initial days of war. People were quite enthusiastic and people uh, were influenced by the, uh, this uh, idea of war and idea of doing something for one's country. But if you look at this poem uh, in the current perspective, we see that nowadays the poem is seen as somewhat naive because it offers little for the actual experience of war. After we have seen so many world wars and so much of attention which, is, which goes on in the world, we see that it offers very little of the actual experience because war is not just about patriotism, war is thus not just about love for one country, but it's, it also involves a lot of violence and brutality and worst experiences when it comes to uh, soldiers. So uh, here we feel that uh, this poem has very little to offer. This undoubtedly captures and distills a particular type of patriotism because uh, uh, the true, true patriotism does not uh, uh, encourage war, rather it uh, should always encourage peace. Uh, within a month of soldiers attaining huge public acclaim, Brooke died. So Brooke did not have that opportunity of uh, having experience of war uh, in the later years of uh, World War I. He died, uh, but this poem became uh, quite famous in the public. So that's uh, the poem Brooke. Uh, and